Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It's May the 27th. It's 2019. Here we are. I'm Alan. You're you. Uh, let's do this thing that we do. Um, if you are here, uh, please put your name on the attendees list. The I'll put that. I'll put the links to the hackpad hackpad in the chat right now. Um, uh, so yeah, if you put your attendee names on there, uh, Dirk has already volunteered to take notes. So thank you, Dirk. Uh, and uh, what happens now is we go through a round of updates where we all tell you each other what we were doing last week, uh, what we are blocked on, if anything, so we can get unblocked and what is the next port of call what we're going to be doing this week uh, so let's get started uh, this week Vashko is on on top of the list so uh, Vashko would you like to give us your update yes hello everyone uh, so last week I worked mostly in the interface connection proposal it is ready for review I've been discussing it uh, with Jacob for a while because I started integrating it with the uh, GSLIP uh, TCP uh, pull request that I believe was Zerk who created it for integrating the, the, the remaining interfaces. And uh, I'm actually hearing an issue because basically when we create a connection, we, in fact, we create, we have a stream, uh, which was before called the rock connection. And I'm basically, not sure of what will be the best uh, way for a developer to just uh, do this initial iteration because after that we'll just open new streams and it will be fine but the first one it's kind of strange and uh, i'm not seeing a really good way of doing that if we pass the stream in the constructor or not but so basically i would like to ask you to review the pr and provide your thoughts other than that, I, I worked on uh, with the Shane Safe guys to the integration of Gossip Sub. Basically, I, I created PRs for the JSLIP B2P, JSLIP B2P daemon, and for the interop for, for using the, their implementation of Gossip Sub. I also found some problems and I also created a PR for fixing those in the Gossip Sub GS. And basically, I think we are on a good way. And uh, now what is what we are missing there is basically interrupt tests for uh, uh, the integration between flood sub and uh, gossip sub notes, stress tests, and uh, hopefully after that we will be ready to, to have it enabled in JSLib to uh, So block that I said, uh, please review the interface connection pull request. And uh, so far this week, I would like to, to get the interface connection to the finish line and uh, continue working in uh, async iterators work. Maybe I will also start working in the flood sub and uh, pub sub modules uh, refactor and uh, uh, sync with the shine safe guys in order to check where I can help them to get gossip sub to the finish line. That's everything for me. Any questions? Uh, yeah, just. So personally, I'm going to have very little time between now and camp to work on async iterators or review any refactor work to do with that. Um, so like, I think that probably is true for quite a lot of the team at the moment. Um, and it, because it's not something that is critical to um, getting to IPFS camp, I suggest um, we kind of, you know, tentatively park that for now uh, and kind of allow ourselves to work on core camp or well, core camp or just camp camp stuff that will help camp basically uh, rather than uh, rather than kind of the async iterator stuff um, for now um, do you think that's a good idea uh, firstly uh, uh, and yeah th that's the only question I have uh. <laughs> Well, basically, uh, I will be blocked on that, but I have other things that I can work on, so it's not really a problem for me. And, yeah. uh, and in, I also in what way would you be blocked? I will be blocked in the basically in the in the TCP and the WebSockets PRs that I would like to integrate the, yeah. Yeah. the connection and all the the other ones modules that will appear on top of them. But uh, also, I think Jacob may have some time this week to 
look at it. So I'm not really concerned. It was just more on on heads okay. up, and I can get other things to do. So it's fine. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, Volker, you've got a question. Um, I also don't so far do any camp work, so I can also help with code reviews if needed. Cool. I will ping you, Volker. Thank you. Okay, cool. Any other questions for Vashko before we move on? All righty. Thank you, Vashko. Um, next up on the list is Dirk. Uh, you are not sending, <laughs> but you're here, as am I. Um, would you like to give us your update, please? Yes. Uh, it's not actually me. It's my, my doppelganger. Um, so this week I was just writing some tests for garbage collection, which is pretty much ready to go. The only thing left is uh, I'm just trying to get one of my tests to work in web workers. It works in the browser, but for some reason not in web workers. So just trying to figure that out. And then uh, I also realized that we're not doing any locking when we pin stuff. So um, I created an issue to, uh, to add locking. Um, and thinking about that over the weekend, we might actually it might benefit from using reference counting, that, that pin locking thing, but that's something we can talk about a little bit further in the issue itself. And that's, uh, that's it for me, I think. Cool, thank you, Doug. Any questions? Okay, it doesn't look like it. Um, I have one, I just had one thought, which is probably not related, but I know that there is, some kind of locking in MFS for the um, for the whole web worker purpose um, because you'll have many like potentially many people accessing the same um, MFS route um, and I just wondered if that was if that could possibly be a lead to your problem in web, web workers in in some way. Um, yeah, I should take a look at that. I mean, I've been using um, so. Alex actually wrote a library called Mortis, which uh, is used by MFS for locking. So I've been using that for the garbage collection work. Um, but yeah, in theory, that should work in web workers as well. So yeah. I double check that. Okay. It was just a, just an idea. Uh, yeah, cool. Really. All right. Uh, I have no other questions. That's very good news. Uh, it's really good to see you. Well, <laughs> new functionality to come to JS IPFS that has, uh, been in Go forever, <laughs> seemingly. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you. Um, cool. All right. Uh, oh, okay. Next up is me. Um, so yeah, last week spent a lot of time uh, trying to get the 036 release out the door. It is now released. You can read the blog post. It's there. Um, and then there are a couple of bug fix releases to go on top of it that we found uh, as soon as it was as soon as it re was released. So um, so 36.2 is now um, is now. Um, and I spent most of the rest of the week working on IPFS core, uh, IPFS camp core course A content. Um, the outline for the course is there, and so far I don't think I've had any feedback to say that it's terrible. So that's that's a relief. Uh, <laughs> and cool, I'm not blocked on anything. Uh, next up, I'm going to continue work on the working on the IPFS core course A camp stuff, um, and. I'm the DRI for deep dives. So I have an ask for everyone uh, on the call and also anyone who's watching um, outside of the call. Uh, deep dives, we need, we need more open problems uh, for people to uh, discuss at the deep dive sessions at IPFS camp. So if you know what the big, hard, open, meaty problems are that you'd like to deep dive on um, at IPFS camp, then please uh, go to this issue and, uh, uh, and register them there so that we can uh, get them discussed at IPFS camp and uh, create some good ideas and, uh, and solutions for, for them whilst we're there. Um, so yeah, if you do have any ideas, then please, it would be amazing if you just noted them down uh, on that issue or, or on, I think it links to a, a spreadsheet or something uh, where, you, where they're, they're being collated. But um, really need that content because we need at least 30 of them because there's so many attendees. Um, so yeah, cool. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, that's me for this week. Uh, any questions? Vashko. Uh, just one question, uh, where can uh, we see the IPFS camp courses? 
I think there is a content outline now on the IPFS camp website. Uh, there is a, uh, I will put a link to the course co folder with all of the, uh, with all of the, um, all of the courses and stuff, uh, when I can fish it out. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? Cool. All right. Let's move on. Uh, Jim is up next. What have you been up to, Jim? Okay. So IPFS camp, um, working with Lydell and Hugo on course C. I didn't do a whole much. I was just sort of listening in on them and uh, giving feedback, but uh, hopefully this week I'll do a little bit more on it. Um, um, also been sort of keep talking to different people about ideas for these mini projects and putting them in there. Um, starting to build up a bunch of them. Uh, talk to David to see if we come up with a process for actually filtering through these and sort of figuring out how to green light them. The, the whole thing's taking me a little bit more time than I thought to get it off the ground. But um, I, I like the, the issues that have been su submitted so far. Um, the biggest problem is uh, um, for peer, peer pad launch is uh, IPFS cluster sort of broke um, <laughs> we're saving, saving all the data into IPFS cluster and it pins the data in there and it was going into sort of split, split brain mode where you talk, one time you talk to, you talk to one half of the cluster, the other time you talk to the other half of the cluster. Now, now when I talk to the cluster, you can't even really talk to it. It's just restarting. So the cluster teams, um, I don't know if they're feverishly working on it, but, uh, they're definitely very aware of the problem. Um, but the, the cluster needs to be. Um, repaired or fixed or something. So um, I'm, I'm sort of thinking of perhaps um, modifying my code so I pin it into multiple places because there's some commercial providers that will also pin IPFS data. So it might be sort of good to give them a little, some CIDs to practice on. Uh, I, I can break things in multiple places. <laughs> Um, and then my Filecoin Friday project is also using Peerbase, and I found a bug in Peerbase by doing that. So um, there's a multi multiple multiple value register, and uh, if you write the value on Peer A, write, uh, it'll sync over to Peer B. Overwrite the value on Peer B, Peer B will say the value is now new value. Sync it over to Peer A, go over to Peer A, it says you have two different values that so it's not supposed to work that way. Um, I've done some debugging and I think I know what the problem is. So I'm going to try to fix that this week. Um, and um, so um, this week, um, more IPFS camps priority, um, but I really want to get this, uh, I really want to get PeerBase, PeerPad launched for IPFS camp because it's just been sitting around forever. And um, get, so I'll get that pinner working. And um, David also uh, tagged me last week, and he wants me to help out a bit with content discovery and the issues that Andre Cruz uh, raised um, in the issue. I should link it um, for from GSFFS. He wants to use it in the identity dem demo. So um, I'd love if we can talk a bit more about that as well. And that's it for me. Cool. Any questions for Jim? All right, cool. Let's move on then. Uh, we have just uh, Volker just uh, last up. Would you like to give us your update? So I've been working a bit on the uh, JS IPLD um, DAG protocol buffer stuff again because currently Alex and I kind of have the plan to just strip it down as minimal as possible as UnixFS is the probably only user of it and just not having theoretically nice APIs, but just doing the thing it needs to do. Uh, I've worked a bit on this. And then I worked also looked over the multi-formats stuff because there's fancy things like, as far as I can tell, that multi-streams, for example, isn't actually a thing. So there's no implementation. No one's using it, but there's a spec for it. Um, it's a lift over from older days and just yeah, try to clean up the, all the multi-format stuff because the, the IPLD 
P team kind of feels a bit responsible. So there's the lib P2P team feels responsible for some parts and the IPLD team for the rest kind of. So I'm, I feel a bit like the maintainer of it currently. Uh, let's see how this goes. Um, yeah, and next week or this week, I will spend time on finally on some geo stuff again. So it's IPLD related and yeah. I guess at one point there will be a demo or something. So it's just, um, yeah, for this audience, it's just some fancy IPLD geo stuff. Yeah, that's all. Any questions for Volker? Uh, I might have heard you wrong, but did you say multi-stream is not used? Yes, so there's only multi-stream select, which is a different thing. Which oh, is okay. And multi-stream has like a long history of being renamed. And in the end, it's not a thing anymore, it seems. Okay. So I still find to get agreed. So there's an open issue and I still find to agreement that it, as far as I can tell, it's not like, it's not an actual thing, uh, but we'll see. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I thought that multi-stream was just multi-stream and multi-stream select were the same thing. And we definitely use multi-stream select. Yeah. Um, yeah, so multi stream select is a thing, but multi stream is not. Okay. <laughs> All right, fun times. Okay, thank you, Volker. Uh, any other questions? Or... All right, okay. Uh, then, uh, all right, moving on. La, we have a question from Dirk. Um, would you like to rephrase that, seeing as you're here? Or yes. Um, <laughs> So something I noticed uh, while I've been doing this garbage collection tests is that I'm spending a lot of time just kind of like adjusting timeouts because things fail on um, in CI. So I don't know how this how this works, like who maintains CI exactly or the machines there. But I was thinking it's probably going to in, like increase our productivity if we can kind of match the timing of the test to our to our laptops. Um, so I just wanted to kind of hear people's thoughts about that. Yeah, it'd be rad. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the the machines are just provided by Travis. Um, I know in Circle or like GitLab, you can bring your own machines and. Uh, okay. in, but I thought I thought that Travis just provides those machines, and I don't know if Travis um, allows you to give them more money <laughs> and have better machines. I mean, it would be really cool because the Windows machines that this run on, I swear they're like Raspberry Pis or something. Yeah, they're super slow. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize it was their infrastructure. Who's, yeah. Who would know the answer to that question? Hugo would know the most about that. Uh, okay, uh, but otherwise, I would, yeah, I mean, you just have to ask um, Travis. Make a note myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Well, is there, sorry, did anyone else want to add to that or have I caught it? Okay. All right. Um, so we're pretty much done. There's no cross team, and there's no one else here from cross team who wants to give an update. I know I didn't mention that at the start, but um, sorry. I know Lido was lurking. Didn't know if you wanted to say anything. No, okay. All right. Uh, cool. Uh, so any other notes? Our VMX will be out on Thursday, the thirtieth of May. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right note taken um uh and that's it i think uh, unless anyone has any other business we i have one more question actually um for vashko vashko when you're talking about the um the connection interface um you mentioned a particular scenario that you're kind of like trying to figure out how it would be best to handle it um could you add that into the issue so we can uh, sort of talk about the scenario in particular Yes, I will do that. It's basically, uh, the issue is when you, it was you created the TCP pull request, right? Yes. Basically, what what happens is when you when you create uh, a con uh, when you do like TCP connect, basically you will receive the, the TCP the stream from a Node API, and uh, basically what was happening before is that it was named like raw connection. And it was used as naming connection, but it was a stream. And now, uh, in our at least in my proposal, we abstract the stream for like a uh, future event, and so we do not have that stream anymore. So my dog 
is if we should uh, add the stream the reference to the constructor or if we should have like a, a, an API method for that. But I will uh, describe it better in the issue. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Well, if we're all done, then you can all have eight minutes of your life back to squander as you please. Uh, we're early. There's not many people here because it's holidays day today. So uh, that's the reason. Anyway, I think we're all done. So thank you very much, everyone, for um, for participating. And I will see you next week for another round of tell us what you've been doing and what you're going to do this week. Uh, and thanks for coming again. And bye. Bye.